So there is always this fluctuation of comfort and discomfort. Now, the thing is, I'm going to use the couch analogy. If I just say on the couch, you have taken the control of the comfort and discomfort away. But when you go forth in the direction which you inspire to, you're in control of the comfort and then welcome the discomfort. There's a different feeling. One is you're being thrown around by the world. The other ones, you actually become the alchemist in which you were born to be. You actually transmute because you got to keep transmuting. I got to take this burst of energy and place it into this place and then it becomes discomfort and then it becomes comfortable again. It's a cycle. But I want to be, I want to wake up in the morning and jump out of bed because I want to control my discomfort, not be controlled by the discomfort. So metaphorically, the couch controls the discomfort and the comfort. I want to control it. So the gym, heading to the gym, is where I'm in control, so to speak. And I'm just using, you don't have to go to the gym. This is just no. a metaphoric aspect of it. Yeah. But for me, it's it's part and parcel of what I do. And also, sitting here talking about stuff that I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey, we're trying to describe <laughs> yeah. the undescribable. Yeah, and we're, I don't know. You guys let us know how we're doing. <laughs> yeah, right. I um, So personally for me, Frank, <laughs> when... <clears throat> I um, really started to um, understand and experience these principles. It was exciting for me. I started to see, as we were talking about in the beginning, you know, um, we are storytellers. So I began to actually see the narrative that was going on in my head and what I had been carrying, you know, unconsciously for years these stories of, you know, what are you going to do if this happens? Are you going to have enough? How are you going to support a family? Um, you should be further along in life. These are all very common things. And I began to see that, oh, wow, this, these are all stories that I'm, I'm carrying with me that are, are weighing me down, right? And so this became very clear to me. And this is what people often to refer to as an awakening. You begin to awaken to the commentary in your head and realizing, wow, that's not me. I'm, I'm a witness to that commentary. You're, you're an awareness. So this was uh, such a mind-blowing experience for me personally, and I loved it. And then I started to kind of see like, okay, if I can carry these stories that I don't like and that have been holding me back, I can begin to carry new stories that I would like to experience, right? And that um, create the story I want to experience. So then I started, you know, uh, focusing. Uh, people refer to this in the new age, woo-woo like stuff as manifestation. You know, you manifest, you know, what you want to experience. And, and that's great. Yes, you can manifest certain experiences that you want. And so that's great. That's exciting, you know, just like anything. Then you come to a point where you see that that also is a set of stories. Yes, a set of preferential stories that you would like to experience. And then you kind of see the whole game for what it is. And, and this is what Frank and I really, really like to get at, which is this entire reality is a story. Everything you are experiencing as it unfolds is your mind categorizing it and assigning a meaning and creating a story about why it's happening, whether it's good or bad for you, whether it can lead to something. And it's all a story. Yeah. And because we are the storytellers in any situation, circumstance that arises that you're unfamiliar with, you actually have the choice of choosing the perspective that's preferential for the output in which you're seeing. Absolutely. And that's why it's like when you step above this as what they call, when you start to master these principles, you navigate, but then you could actually become what we call a master and actually you can actually then create. So we're going back and forth and I have no idea where I am on the scale. I, I know life is a lot more exciting for me, um, but I don't even know what to label. I, like how does one know they're a master or they're just mastering? Or how do I know? Like I'm absolutely full of shit as well. But I understand, <clears throat> I'm getting better with the understanding of the feeling of excitement opposed to the feeling of anxiety. I now know the difference. They're, they're the same frequency, they're the same energy, just moving through a different filter. 
labeled differently. Yeah, well, you're looking at it differently. So, um, so like anxiety would be doing 100 miles an hour in the direction you want to didn't want to go. 100 miles an hour moving in a car 100 miles an hour would be going in the direction in which you want to go is excitement. Mm-hmm. You're still moving 100 miles an hour in the direction. One creates anxiety, the other one creates excitement. So the 100 miles an hour is the same frequency. It's just a different lens you're putting it through, a different filter. In other words, heading west is where I want to go. That's exciting. Heading east is not where I want to go. That's anxiety. So, again, this doesn't even come close to because anxiety and depression are words we put out there. Um, people can touch on them. But that's we actually have the, the ability to transmute and, and transfer the energy into the direction which we want to go on a dime. Well, that's the thing. People will say, know it's possible. how? And it's very simple. Let go. Let go. You, you as soon as you are aware, oh, I'm moving east but I want to be going west. So you became aware. So yeah. that that right there is a huge moment of for yeah. you personally. That is that is the awakening. It's you seeing what's going on. You have you are now aware. Yeah. Now you're no That's longer part of the stream of consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You're no part. Of your or excuse me that that stream of commentary. You've disassociated from it. That right there is is a win, and you let go. Yeah. So so I, I, it's. To get to a practical manner to help people out there or to see it, I don't know if you could fully get there, but so if I found myself moving in the wrong direction, I became aware of it. That's the sense of enlightenment. Now, because I'm enlightened, what do I do? Well, once I take my foot off the gas, the car naturally slows down. And what I mean is when I detach from it, the physics are already done for me. Like, in other words, taking my foot off the gas... The car naturally slows down. So once you, once you recognize you're going in the wrong direction, you naturally slow it down. So once you recognize what we call a negative field, you actually start moving in the positive direction. So all you're doing now is transferring the frequency and moving it differently into another direction. But we don't do the work. We witness the work being done. I don't, I don't create the oxygen molecules for me to breathe. I don't make the sun come up. I don't know any human being that does, but we witness it. So why is everything else we have to do? We don't. But my attention to the sun is what makes it so, when I look at it via rising in the east or setting in the west, me breathing in consciously oxygenate my body, gives me more control but if I don't focus on it, I'll still breathe, but <laughs> I feel sluggish, not uh, like that. But when I, I, you know, I do this all the time to people, like, I'm feeling tired. I'm like, you ever do breathing exercise? Like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, breathe in deep. And I have, I have them do these panting type, <laughs> I do it 10 times. Box breathing. They yeah. do that in the military. Yeah. So I, I do or it. the seals or something. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's done all over. Like, the, these are ancient breathing techniques. So mm-hmm. We all just con- label it differently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's not that we, we You're need, not a hippie. You're a Marine, saying, so it's called box breathing. Well, there's a, <laughs> there's a reason the Navy SEALs use it. Oh, absolutely. Because it freaking works. But you see what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. if you were to say, hey, you're meditating, that Navy SEAL says, hey, no, that's for hippies. I'm box breathing. Well, the, we, we put these ideas the, and connotations. Yeah. That's the, their story. The I'm Seal, no hippie. Yeah. I don't meditate. The Davy Seal of today might uh, use the word meditate. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But so you d- see, it takes time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's like, well, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. so funny. Because the, the association. It is. Yeah. It's all what our mind associates with. Yeah. And it's because we've seen it in movies and film and you yeah. know, but, mo- television. Do, and do you know what's nice about news. today? It's like, even though we, we flip in one story for the other story. Every time. We're but flipping. we're not... We're not crushing the other story which is nice we don't need to and that's yeah. what we've been trying no. to do for before it was like which is the best story this I'm is like, wrong no. yeah now it's like we're coming out with new ideas like um you know when i listen to somebody talk about this or talk about that i'm like wow these these are interesting topics but one doesn't negate the other they just expand into the field 